first of all, thanks a lot, Ronit and Ifrat, for joining today's session. So today is our interesting episode. We are going to learn around Cybrax modern session management. Before we jump onto the modern session management, let's hear from Ronit and Ifrat who they are, what exactly they do in Cybrax. So Ronit, we can start from yours. Yes, thank you, Raj. Very, very nice to be uh, here with uh, you and Efrat as we work together closely on a daily basis. So I'm um, a product manager in a secure access team in CyberArk for almost four years now, and we're working and focusing mainly on dynamic privilege access for Windows connections. In my personal time, you know, I have a big family, but I love snowboarding wow. whenever I usually try to like save some time, like a week to go to France or to Switzerland or whatever, somewhere in Europe. I love snowboarding with my husband and also my kids started skiing. So that's cool. And also I like baking cakes, really nice cakes. I like the design and also Pilates, <laughs> something nice. very important for the body and the soul. So, and my goal is to start yoga. So hopefully I'll, I'll get there as well. <laughs> Thank so you. I'm, I'm into yoga. Yoga has got like so many different varieties. So I do a little bit of a meditation and some sort of a yoga poses. So one of the yoga poses I do is Surya Namaskar, Sun Salutation. Probably I'll, I'll sync up with you separately, Ronit. So okay. now I know like what you like doing it. So okay. now let's go to Ifrat. Yeah, Ifrat, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Yes, thank you, Raj. So I'm Ifrat. As Ronit said, I work closely with Ronit. I'm also product manage manager with within the session management, especially dealing with and managing the GPA component. So uh, on my spare time, I love to dance, even though I don't do it often. I love spending time with my friends and family. Uh, especially traveling in the country and outside and abroad. I love to learn about different cultures around the world. And, and I also do a lot of volunteering in, in my community and also outside of the community, like distributing accessories and supplies for those in need. And my favorite is meeting with children with disabilities and just having fun with them and doing some exercises. And um, that's it. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So now let's get into the serious uh, topics. So, yeah. so you guys are talking about DPA dynamic privilege access. So why not? you guys share with us. So what exactly is the dynamic privilege access or sometimes we call it a modern session management and uh, how exactly it can benefit the customers? Okay, thank you, Raj. So uh, cyber art session management with DPA component. DPA stands for dynamic privileged access, but let's call it DPA. So since we like acronyms in uh, cyber art, yeah. So DPA is a SaaS solution designed to protect organizations from cyber threats by securing privileged access to VMs, servers, uh, databases hosted in cloud, on-premises, and hybrid environment. This target with DPA can be accessed within a few ways. We have several methods. So with vaulted access, this is one method. Um, so users access with credentials stored in CyberArk Pound Vault. Second method is with just-in-time access, where users access targets, again, with vaulted credentials, but these vaulted credentials are not privileged. Uh, they don't have permissions. And DPA elevates the users just-in-time. So this is second method which is used. The third method, which is called the uh, zero standing privileged access, let's call it VSP. The access is provisioned on the fly. So for Windows access, we provision an ephemeral user as well as for database access. For Linux targets, we create an ephemeral certificate. 
according to DPA policies, which Ronit will explain later, which defines who can access and what are the permissions to access. Yeah. Yeah, so one follow-up question, Ifrat. So you said DPA works well both for cloud as well as self-hosted self environment, correct? That's correct. DPA works cloud on-premises and hybrid environment. Okay, that's, that's nice because majority of the customers, at least I work with, so they are leveraging upon hybrid and multi-cloud environments. So I think DP is going to be a perfect solution. Now, I think on this particular topic, Ronit, why not you share with us? So what are the key benefits of leveraging upon DPA? Sure. So first of all, I can talk about the first, you know, the most important one, which we, we really like to share, it helps customers, is the cost reduction. And so DPA basically helps reduce infrastructure costs as since it's a service, all the magic is done in SES. And the only thing required is to install a DPA connector in the customer's environment. Um, and this connector basically acts like a reverse proxy uh, to allow secure access from the services to the targets. Um, the connector itself, it needs to be installed on a machine that's light, it needs to be a lightweight component, right? It doesn't require significant resources. And as you can see here with one eighth if we compare this to PSM, to the PSM, which customers are familiar with, with one eighth of the hourly rate, we can run twice the number of concurrent sessions, saving 16 to 32 times the cost for the on-premise footprint. Add to that, the connector machine doesn't require any RDS licensing, which is also something that uh, adds additional costs. So Ron, um, you're saying we yeah. don't need a RDS license? That's no, amazing no. because I have yeah, a lot yeah. of customers so they told me, Raj, they don't want to buy any RDS licenses. I think that's amazing. Yeah. What else? Yeah, that, that leads me to the next point. So easy deployment. And what do you mean by that? Uh, we talked about the connector, right? It's very uh, low in cost, but it's also the management of it. It's installed in minutes, right? And it provides built-in high availability and load balancing, which means that you don't need to deploy a load balancer in front of that, right? Add to the fact that you don't need dedicated GPOs or app locker rules for the connector machine. Harding basically is based on what the organization standard and best practices is. So that's also another benefit. Add to that, it also has SaaS benefits such as like near zero downtime upgrades. So because it's managed in the SaaS, so we push upgrades as we go, right? And it's not something the customer needs to deal with. The last point, which I want to talk about the key benefit is risk reduction. And what do I mean by that? Customers can significantly reduce the risk of privilege access utilizing our ZSP component or zero standing privilege component, right? So how does it work? It reduces the attack surface as less standing accounts are needed. Add to that, to the ZSP component for any type of access to the, um, the all targets, access to all targets types are isolated from the end user, monitored, right? We have the monitoring of, of what happened in the session and MFA secured. That's quite a lot of benefits. Yeah. So, so here are a few things I captured. The first yeah. thing we are talking about the cost reduction. Mm -hmm. From a resource standpoint, customers can reduce from 30 to vCPU all the way to 4 vCPU, and yeah, they can yeah. get the two times the concurrent capacity, right? Okay, that's yeah. amazing. And the second thing, what you mentioned, Ronit, connector setup time, it takes minutes. Even yeah. I personally deployed the connector, it literally takes minutes. And uh, another thing you mentioned, customers don't have to worry about the load balancers at all, so that's mm -hmm. amazing and they don't have to worry about the RDS licenses and all these things. Okay, that's amazing. Um, Raj, I yes. think we should also mention the login account. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Forgot that one, very important one. So, you know, Raj, login account is uh, essential for Linux security. Yes. So organization don't permit accessing Linux servers remotely with a privileged account. So what we do in DPA, we log on with a login account, which is a non-privileged account. 
and and then the users can do privilege actions since we elevate the users to the privileged account associated with the login account. Okay, yes. that's amazing. Let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you guys mentioned about in DPA we support both virtual machine access and the database access. So let's right. start with the database. So what are the three key capabilities uh, we can share it with our audience about Access? Okay, so for the database, in addition to what Ronit just mentioned about all the uh, DPA component capabilities, we have the same for databases, of course, such as cost reduction and native access. So also our secure privilege access to database component support access to via many types of databases. And all of these targets uh, we offer both native access with DSP and native access with vaulted credentials. So as you can see in the slide, we support a variety of database types, SQL Server, MongoDB, Oracle, and more. And we also support many clients. We can see here the CLI client supported and ID client supported as well. Okay, that's that's amazing. So just one question, Ifrat, a lot of customers I talk to, so when it comes to the database, they leverage upon a pass as a service, platform as a service. So for our DPA, does it matter whether customer is using IS or pass? No, so we are also supporting RDS databases, which is, you know, also can be MySQL and SQL, SQL Server and MariaDB, et cetera. So we support both of them. Also databases deployed in uh, EC2s on-premises and also RDS databases, which are managed. In short, so what you said, it doesn't matter to us at all where the databases are posted. It can be hosted on-prem, it can be hosted on the cloud, and cloud it can be hosted on the virtual, on the EC2s or the VMs, or it can be hosted as a RDS, so which is a platform as a service. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, Follow-up question. So you are saying now with these, the supportability of all these databases, our customers, they don't have to worry about developing any kind of a PSM plugins at all, custom plugins? No, no. So the way we do it is uh, we don't connect to a PSM uh, server and then from PSM server connect to the database server. Um, we connect directly with the uh, native client of the user's choice from his desktop natively to the database server. Okay. This accelerate uh, user adoption, of course. Yeah. So I personally tried couple of clients, I tried it on MySQL Workbench, PG Admin, DB Weaver. I tried it on MongoDB Compass. It works perfectly fine. And I showed uh, the user experience to a lot of customers, a lot of prospects. Everyone loved it. So thanks, Ifra, yeah. for doing uh, such we a love it. Job. We love your YouTube uh, videos as well. Yeah. <laughs> and we show it to customers as well. So <laughs> thanks for doing it and sharing it in your channel. Yeah. Thing. So now we have shared around modern session management. Can you guys share with us where exactly we are seeing uh, this entire industry is going in terms of the modern session management and what you guys are working upon? Sure, right. So session management is part of identity security platform, right? And within the platform, we have many services. We have SEA, we have Privilege Cloud, we have a Secrets Hub, Identity, and all of these services, they serve different use cases for our customers. So our vision is to unify and centralize the management operations of all of these services. Like think of one place where, we where you have um, to manage access to all the cloud uh, environment or one place where you uh, manage and deploy the connectors and so on. As and in DPA, 
we already started integrating with the connector management service and with the cloud onboarding service. So stay tuned for updates about the progress. As you can see in the slide, this is our vision as what we call admin portal. And in this slide especially, you can see the centralized, the access policies. Uh, so where you have all the policies for accessing targets uh, for all target types and for all environment in one place. We are CyberArch and all the services are moving gradually for having this end goal, this admin portal. But it's not just only for admins. We also want to simplify the work of the end user as well. So we're also now building a user end user interface as well by providing also one single place where the end user can view and access all the targets it needs, they need for their day-to-day -day work to complete their tasks. So this again, this is very helpful for the end users and this as well helps the adoption for the end users within the organization. And we have more. Yeah, yeah. On it. Yeah. You want to discuss so it? basically, uh, I think if we move on, so another interesting fact is that today, self-hosted PAM customers can utilize DPA when accessing targets with zero standing privilege access, right? So they can use DPA today, but not yet uh, with accessing vaulted credentials managed in self-hosted PAM, just like we have with Privilege Cloud today. So we are working nowadays on an integration between DPA and self-hosted PAN Vault to allow this additional type of access, which will benefit all, all type of customers we have and also increase adoption, right? We also want to see more and more users advancing from the benefits DPA has to offer. And we don't, we can't forget, you know, an impact we declare this uh, new core AI uh, initiative. So, in DPA, since we have so many this year, so many integrations for, for in our products with AI, and I'll focus in DPA, for example, what, what we're going to offer. So let's talk a little bit about session recordings, right? So we store hours of session recordings in different formats. It's really hard for an auditor to leverage it at scale watching hours of videos, reading through all the activity logs, understanding what's risky, what's not, right? So using Core AI, we can basically help them by turning all of this data into insights about session activities and detailed audits, right, with risk levels that you can easily use to improve the security posture and identify these malicious operations if something occurred. So the vision here is that you don't need to search for specific risky commands. You don't need to know what command is a combination of commands is indeed risky, right? You don't need to really be an expert. Here, Core AI can help and basically put together a storyline of a session to easily assess what's risky, what occurred, right? And, and, and act upon that. So that's a very interesting in initiative we're working on these days. That's amazing, uh, Ronit. Uh, so yeah, so it's amazing to hear that we can help out our customers to reduce their review time and going to make all the recording more actionable and then they will be able to quickly take an action if anybody is doing something funny. So we have come to the end of the session. So thanks a lot, Ronit and Ifrat for taking our time today. So please stay tuned for the future podcast where we'll, we will be sharing a lot more around the modern session management and other topics here. Yeah.